good day everybody. Uh, today I'll be talking about zero trust with regard to the identity pillar. What is an identity? An identity is a subject that could either be a human subject, sometimes that could be a non-human subject like a robot or an application, and even times that identity could be tied to a given device that's on your network. But regardless of whether that identity is human, non-human, or a device, we must do what we can to ensure that we're protecting these identities. That's why at Merlin, the first core tenant that we advocate is this concept of identity as a new perimeter. So what does that mean? What that means is when you have identity as a perimeter, you're able to do policy enforcement on these subjects that are on your network. And why do we do that? We do that because a few things. One is we want to ensure that we can increase assurance of these subjects that are connecting to resources. We want to increase, obviously, the security posture of your organization by having the ability to understand these identities or subjects that are connecting to resources. And then lastly, we want to ensure that we can drive down risk. That's really important for most agencies and most organizations that we talk to, doing what we can to reduce our risk posture. We do that using three core principles. The first is a principle of strong authentication. Now, when you use it, your users connect to resources, there are things that we can employ to ensure that those users are practicing strong authentication. Things like multi-factor authentication, where you're prompting for not only a username or a password, but perhaps a second form of authentication. We can also ensure that we're doing what we can to use technologies that allow us to do single sign-on to resources that that user might be connecting to. And we do that using technologies like SAML or OAuth to ensure that those users are not typing in passwords, for example, to other resources that they might want to connect to. Now, what about these non-human devices or non-human things that are on your network? There are many things that you can do to protect those, obviously, uh, things that can protect the keys, can protect APIs, can protect the secrets that those subjects are using to connect to the resources. So the first principle is practicing strong authentication. The next principle that we'd like to talk about is this concept of continuous authorization. So what does that mean? When we do continuous authorization, it basically means that not only are we providing strong authentication for these subjects that are connecting to resources, but we're also continuously verifying that the access that they've been granted and things that they've been authorized to are the things that they need for that given point in time. So practicing this concept of continuous authorization is important and we do that using tools such as governance tools. We could also do better uh, lifecycle management of these identities and ensuring that they're always granted the right permissions just at the right time that they need it. And then lastly, we part of our core pillars or core tenants is this concept of least privilege. When we do least privilege and we enforce that, we ensure that the users or subjects that are connecting to your resources have just the right permissions to do so. And there are many tools in the market that do this, but one that we really like to talk about here at Merlin is a tool called CyberArk Privilege Access Management. Privilege Access Management, or PAM, are what organizations use to protect their most critical assets or their high value assets. A PAM solution can not only ensure that you're granting just the right privileges to those high privileged users that may want to access resources, but you're doing things like isolation, you're doing session monitoring, you're auditing, and you're recording these sessions as your organization needs it. Doing these three things, you can now ensure that you're always continuously protecting authentication, authorization, and the use of least privilege of these credentials that these subjects are using. One other note that I'd like to point out here is that regardless of whether you're using 
cloud-based technologies or directory services within your premise, the idea here is that we want to consolidate and centralize identities as much as possible so that we can do better analytics as we need to, to detect these anomalous behaviors, as well as having the ability to now do more workflow automation, which is also a core tenant of our zero trust model. Thank you.